That's amazing. What an amazing <laughs> sounding theme song. Who could have done that? I don't know. Somebody with um a lot of time. Wow. And skill. And skill. Whoa, it sounded like an echo. That was like Owen Wilson in a cave. <laughs> yeah. Wait, players again? Wow, 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 wow. Oh, I didn't play it. I don't, wow. I don't have mine right now. Oh, you didn't? Oh, mine? Wow. That's very interesting. My first one played so much louder than the rest of them. Uh, Maybe it's because I stocked them all Maybe up. you press the button. Wow, you're so dumb. Harder. Yeah, I pressed it harder. It's it's wow. it's pressure sensitive. Isn't that right, Fred Durst? Uh, technology. Yeah! Now make him say it louder. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> um wow wow uh oh oh oh, oh. Leviathan Den and Lizeze say hey draw bomb uh we're gonna play Stardew while we watch we're officially 100% moved in hell yeah hey, that's that's always a good feeling congratulations I, still think, I think I have some boxes still and I moved in May so you're doing really good um great job yeah it's great to hear yeah yeah wait, wait. yeah Oh, come on! Oh, we're wow. off to the races. <laughs> yeah. The soundboards. We're, we're gonna give Kyle PTSD Kyle's if he's in the chat. Watching. <laughs> <laughs> he's so mad we at us. Really, we really, I mean, Fair, look, but he was mad like, at you, okay? I was being restrained, and by, compared to you, I yeah, was restrained, was, okay? <laughs> yeah, he was so mad at us both, equally. It was he crazy. was super mad at us. Um... <laughs> I guess we should. Uh, give, it was my fault. I got carried away. We should. We should probably give backstory if we're gonna be like talking. Like, hey, let's just talk about I something forget. that only we know yeah, about. That no one knows about. <laughs> and then they just, they'll never have the context for it. But um, if it's funny to me, it's got to be funny to everyone else, right? Isn't it cool to just see Fred's hang it out? That's why I watch this show is to see Fred's hang it out. <laughs> um, oh, I mock yeah. that, but that's like half the comments on like let's plays of like people playing games together. But anyways, um. <laughs> Well, folks, uh, let's, for context, uh, first of all, for context, we are Draw Bomb. This is the show where we draw pictures, and boy, it's a art explosion in your face. Um, are you a fan of the arts? Well, then you are in the right place. That's no lie. Are you a friend of the arts? Well, can I have some money? Uh, no, but, um... <laughs> Welcome to Draw Bomb. Uh, what Brandon and I are talking about is we got together with a gang of folks and we watched the Gran Turismo movie. Um, God, not to be mistaken it? with the Gran... Uh, what's the... Gran Ol' Opry. Oh, Gran the Torino? Gran Torino movie. <laughs> it's a different movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, this was a little bit less racist. A lot less racist, I would actually argue. <laughs> <laughs> At least we were. I don't know about Kyle. No, nah, I kid. I kid. Um, uh, uh, that's we, we're slandering now. We're we're committing lies, libel. We and have slander. to. We have to sling mud on his personality before we explain why he was annoyed with us. Yeah, but we the, were watching, the audience sides with us. We were watching a uh, Grand Turismo, um, which is how you say it. Actually, what, however else people pronounce it is wrong. Um, but we were watching the movie and. As we do with a lot of the movies we watch as a group, because a lot of times we're just looking for, like, mediocre or bad movies so that we can, like, you know, make jokes, etc., etc., etc. Um, and we watched that movie, and it was it was pretty mediocre. I would say it was a mid-movie, to, and to use the parlance of our times. And yeah, so we fine. started we started going a little bit... Well, actually, to be fair, Austin is the one who started going on the soundboards first, I think, right? Because he, he, did, he did his thing. Yeah. Where he, he started plays, with it. Yeah, he always... he likes to, Austin likes to play a joke where he'll play music that you think is part of the movie, but then you realize he's just playing music on, to, on the side. He got us pretty good with that sandstorm. Yeah, he, he did. We thought that one was real. We thought it was. Um, but then we went... We, we took it a step further and we started going wild on the soundboards. And when I say we started Couldn't going wild ourselves. on the soundboards, Brandon started going wild. Why don't you give him a taste of what Kyle heard? I was dropping a lot of this one. <laughs> we, oh, yeah. There's that. that. Uh, there's one more you, you played a lot of. Yeah, there it is. Why don't you like hit them all a bunch of times like you did 
for the movie. My, Just give people a taste. Soundboard's like having some issues. It's like, I'm sure. My, sure. <laughs> I'm pressing the button. It's not doing shit. There we go. This oh, there's also this one. Don't forget this this goodie. Oh, yeah. That's Anytime that's somebody hugged or something like that. Yeah. That that was a good that was just but a so taste. That's what I was doing. Imagine that times about a hundred. And that's uh <laughs> and then I was also doing some sounds, like I would do a little bit of uh Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I did a lot of the sad song. Doing a little bit of that. <laughs> it is a good one. Yeah. You know, the trick with the soundboard is restraint. <laughs> I did not have that. No, we still haven't learned that. But maybe quite next time. Yet. Meh. Kyle will still watch movies with us. But we did a bit of that. Please do. I should get that as a drop. Um But so yeah, Kyle Kyle got really frustrated with us and he waited till the movie ended and then immediately like signed off the call. And I don't blame him. I don't blame yeah. him. Gosh, I really blew it. You really did. He's never going to talk to Lost Look Up. No, he's mad at me. He's super mad. Anyways, so yeah, Gran Turismo movie, I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> That's my review. Yeah. I don't know. If you're a big fan of... It felt like Gran a... Gran Turismo the video game? Yeah, then I, I guess get, it's for you. I don't I know who guess. else it's for. <laughs> I don't know who it's for. I don't know what the target audience. Uh, here's here's what I think the target audience of the music is, or the movie is, is like the same kind of people who like to watch biopics and enjoy that formula by the numbers sort of thing. It's it was like the biopic version of a sports movie, you know. They they always have like the same sort of uh, structure to them. You know, unluck unlikely uh, rookie is kind of plucked out of like no class society or whatever and then they're they're brought fish into out of water. the yeah fish out of water oh look they're actually like incredible at the sport look at them go oh no halfway through there's a tragedy that they have to get through that makes them question whether or not they're actually doing the right thing oh just kidding they win now that, that was the movie sorry to spoil it guys that's the movie i just explained it <laughs> i mean that's that's a lot of biopics so i don't think you spoiled it really no, if you've seen a if you've seen one movie based on a true story, quote unquote, uh, you've seen Grand Turismo. They start the making movie. original biopics, then then that would no longer be a spoiler. But yeah, or I mean, it would would become a spoiler. But that's just how they all are. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like I figured, Walk Hard would have been like the end of like these cliches, but no, they're still doing them. Bohemian Rhapsody won awards. I know that still pisses me off. That like I terrible. We should watch it for the bad movie night sometime, just because uh, it's bad. It, I, I, I know you have. It's not like fun bad though. It's just kind of like, it's just kind of like annoying. Like, and uh, I was reading just recently. Um, so years ago, some of you might have seen this. I remember reading about it like back before. But Sasha Baron Cohen was gonna be, yeah, Freddie Mercury, and they were developing that for a while. Uh, but it ended up not doing it because the band Queen was like, he wanted to do like. A whole story like warts and all which you should do in a biopic because yeah. otherwise what's the fucking point just to sell records yeah um and you want you want to like learn the history but but they the bandmates who he didn't name were like no i don't want <laughs> i don't want <laughs> people to think this of me or so on you know yeah that's um, yeah so yeah. so he dropped out and then they made a movie that's just like a, a commercial for queen which I love Queen, but that I, that movie is dumb. Yeah, I actually. You know what's interesting is like not even like three months later they came out with like that Elton John biopic Rocket Man. Yeah, which I heard is much better. Oh, okay, I didn't see it because I was like, I've had my fill. No, that's fair, but I I I can't speak personally. But like I heard people who like hated Bohemian Rhapsody. I, I, there's one reviewer who I, I I like his reviews. I'm not sure how much he reviews movies. Uh, he doesn't review movies quite as much, but like his reviews are good, but I remember him I don't know if this was actually the same guy. I could be wrong, but I just remember reading somebody whose opinion I respect uh, Basically shitting Shiny on doggy with the raid Whoa, holy crap. Hey Thank you. How's it going shiny? Welcome. 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 I'm gonna see if I can put a little so do we have that functionality in Nightbot? We do not Wow, we're a professional stream um We've only been doing this for like 
two years. Yeah, more than Plus that. We've like been four doing years. it. <laughs> yeah. We uh, we technically started this show in 2019 Thanksgiving. Um, wow. So it's been four, we were so four years. <laughs> we, were so, we were different people back then. Oh my god. The world hadn't hardened dust. <laughs> yeah. 2019 we, Thanksgiving. What a what a time. That was totally. like. We could do anything with our lives. Wow, I'm going to go to more concerts next year. No, Ian. No, you're not. You're not going to go to any concerts next year. Um, <laughs> but no, I heard from some movie reviewer whose opinion I, I respect to some degree. Uh, basically say how Rocket Man was like pr a proper movie <laughs> and like a proper biopic. Um I can't speak f uh, with any, you know, sort of, uh, you know, when, whenever people review a movie, I still, like, I don't consider, like, I, I never take somebody else's opinion of a thing as my own, because, like, I found that I just often disagree with other people's opinions, but sometimes it's good to have that metric if I haven't gotten around to seeing yeah, the movie. To be I mean, like, it's oh, good. It's, it's, it's fair to, you know, respect people's opinions, like, you have friends that you're like you know you trust their opinion then I, I think that's a good metric to follow but yeah well, you still ultimately like go with yeah. your own opinions this guy wasn't a friend he was just like a reviewer that I've, I've read his reviews before but you know it's the same, same so how long dip. are you guys friends for uh, dude, I've been hanging out with this guy uh, parasocially for like uh, 15 years something like that I put his videos on and we just straight up chill yeah, we just hang out watching his video. <laughs> um, so no, I've I've heard good things about the Elton John biopic. Uh, so that's 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 something. But yeah, I would have figured you would have figured that like after Walk Hard came out and like basically perfectly skewered the genre, that they you know would have sort of taken the hint. But no, they didn't. And I remember seeing they're like, like, wow, they got us. Let's they make got more. Us. I remember seeing the the Rick James. Or not Rick James, I'm sorry. Uh, pfft, James Brown uh, biopic, Get Up, I think it was, with some with some friends, and like, it was interesting because like, take the opening of Walk Hard where he's like, w you know, working the club, and then he gets like this the chance to be like the the front runner of the band, and then like they're like, oh wow, you're great, you need, you need to that happened like that's that's like the beginning of the rick james <laughs> god damn it why do i keep rick james james brown uh the james brown movie rick james james brown rick rick james brown um but that's like the beginning of that movie although to be fair get up at least does a couple of interesting things like they'll have like james brown chadwick boseman rest in peace uh he, they'll have him like sort of break the fourth wall and sort of like be doing things while like people are kind of like ignoring his existence you know sort of thing like while he's kind of like giving mm -hmm. some backstory so they at least did something interesting with like the presentation but like still the plot structure like at least for that part because i didn't watch much more than that um was just straight out of walk hard which is weird as hell maybe well and there's no way that it happened that way I was about no. to be like, well, maybe that's how it happened, but maybe that's bullshit. Happened. Yeah, I, I don't... I my mean, favorite but, scene, and I exa I exaggerated a little bit, but my favorite scene from the Bohemian Rhapsody movie is Freddie Mercury shows up to band practice, and he's, like, hungover, and they're all mad because he's, like, late, and he's like, he's like, sorry, I was out partying, and they're like, oh, you, and he's like, <laughs> but I have a little ditty in my head, and then he just does the whole, like, all right, you... Play the bass like this. You oh, do God. this, and then they just start playing. Another one bites the dust, and I'm just like, "Ugh, <laughs> come on, man. Jesus Christ, so lame. Like that's not even cool. Like even if that was how it came to, like even if that was the true story, lie in the other direction because it's not interesting. Yeah, it that you just <laughs> he just did it on the first try. That's not interesting. I mean, it is, but only because it's so unbelievable. Yeah, I'll never like whenever they're just like the bass player like immediately knows the groove and like start like whenever the band just immediately knows the new song and they're like oh wow <laughs> like I, I love bones are their money <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's that sketch is like the perfect companion piece to walk hard like in terms of skewering those music movies because that sketch is so funny and so brilliant and it's yeah it's perfect it's it's, it's a perfect sketch i i was laughing so hard when i first watched it because i was just like yes thank you for doing this sketch i'm so tired of biopics <laughs> Um, it's, they didn't it's really perfect. draw attention to it, but Walk Hard kind of made a joke about that too. Like, 
they get to that part and he just kind of says like follow my lead and they're all like singing the backup music and stuff and they keep, like, <laughs> yeah looking at him like they're trying to get like cues <laughs> they're just like singing the words with him <laughs> well if you haven't seen walk hard folks highly recommended it's, it's, it's great i know everybody like people who i know people i i feel like people like to throw around the term underrated but i just feel like i don't feel like as many people know about that one as they should like it yeah it comes from the era of like you know similar like comedies being like quoted by everybody and that one just kind of didn't get that yeah um and i don't know why it's so good it's it's i actually i watched walk hard and i watched hot rod in the same night um which wow, was a great night for comedy for me <laughs> <laughs> um because those are both classics in my opinion um but yeah walk hard it's 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 brilliant it's a great it's a perfect biopic parody i don't think you could do a better parody of biopics it's it's like one of the best parody movies ever i would argue it's so good yeah and john c Riley actually sings all of his songs in it and he's like an incredible singer yeah. he's a good singer he has a i haven't heard any of the music but he has a band and i've seen that it like it tour by a time or two i never went and saw him live but oh man I mean, he can he can sing yeah you can apparently um uh but uh yeah i mean walk hard and it's like good too because it's like satire parody but it's also like its own thing it's not just straight up like yeah it's not like, like a like, date movie or some shit like the, that where they're yeah, just date movie meet the spartans or whatever they were doing for a while there man yeah. what a dark time Ugh. i i still don't think like parody movies have quite recovered from that awful period of time um, yeah I actually, so I, I, I think I saw a movie by the creator, I think Seltzer and Friedberg are their names. It might have just been one of them, but I saw their Fast and the Furious parody, I want to say like last year or something like that, called Super Fast, and holy shit. It right. actually took me like three times sitting down, like, to get through the whole movie, because I just like would keep stopping and being like, no, no. And why did I continue, uh, why did I finish the movie? Because I don't know, some cost fallacy. I stuff. They made that one. I don't know if they've made any other movies recently aside from Super Fast. I'm sure they're still like putting them out because like it was on like Amazon for free or like you know if you have a Prime subscription you get to watch Super Fast or whatever. And I was just like Jesus Christ, this is Thanks. this is somebody's still paying them for, to do this stuff. Yeah, if they can make it, <laughs> if they can get movies funded, <laughs> why can't we? They had movies in the theater at one point. They did. Oh my god. Awful, awful movies. I've seen... So here's the thing that sucks about those movies, is there's usually like one good joke tucked away in like 90 minutes of bad jokes. Um, that's it. That's all. And those movies only exist because people were making good ones of those at one point. Yeah. Well, it's like they would always, like, whenever they were gonna like drop a trailer for one of their movies they'd be like from two of the writers of scary movie like that got them so much <laughs> mileage yeah if i was the wayne's brothers i'd be like fuck you guys stop <laughs> yeah. this makes us look dumb this is terrible um i, mean, I think granted the stuff they made after scary movie was pretty dumb but yeah regardless regardless i think the one like, no don't put our names on that i think one of the writers also made that movie that's like it has uh what's his name i can't remember his name off the top of my head but it's like the, the guy from airplane um who's who's the guy from airplane what's his name uh which one leslie nielsen leslie nielsen thank you um the one that he did that like adam sandler wrote the theme song for uh like spy hard i think it was uh oh, it was weird al what i said weird al didn't i you said adam sandler oh my god i'm i'm fucking up all kinds of names today <laughs> Um, yeah, well, Leslie Nielsen was making tons of those. He did Spy Hard. He did all the Naked Gun movies in the show. He did. Yeah, but um, the, one of the guys who wrote like Date Movie and Meet the Spartans, he wrote oh, Spy Hard. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Spy Hard's not the best. No. Uh, much better to watch Naked Gun. <laughs> yeah, watch. Yeah, Naked Gun or Airplane. Naked Gun's great. At least like the first couple, third ones, fine. Um, I don't know if I've seen yeah. that one. Is that the one that's like the got the weird number and has uh, OJ in it? Yeah, they're always like it's Snake Gun two and a half, and then it's Snake Gun three and three quarters. I think. Yeah. Sequels. 
or something like that. I need well, to watch the show because I've the show I never watched it, and that's like what got them movies. There was oh, like police academy or police, not police academy, police uh, squad. Uh, <laughs> police squad, I think is actually what it's called. Let me let me look. But yeah, um, parody movies what? went through a period. What was that? I was gonna ask, uh, who's your favorite uh, comedic actor in the Naked Gun movies? Is it OJ? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing ever he's went wrong. Them. He's, he's, he's doing little goofs it. and gaffs and little like 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 slipping on banana peels and shit in 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 that movie. And it's a great movie, and his parts are funny. But that's that's a murderer right there, that's allegedly. Allegedly, uh, you know. Um, he probably did it. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, parody movies, I don't think they've ever quite recovered from like the Meet the Spartans era. And it's like... So, so, so many of the movies are just like, hey, it's that scene from that movie, except somebody gets like crushed by a cow. I don't know. Um, yeah, it's like Paris Hilton walks out and then she's like, I'm Paris Hilton. And then like a safe falls off of like falls on her head from like a skyscraper for no reason like a like a looney tunes thing and you're yeah. like what this is okay. comedy <laughs> yeah bro it's uh, paris hilton got smashed isn't that funny because she sucks isn't that Everyone, great isn't it funny we hate paris hilton we've all decided snooki gets hit by a bus isn't this <laughs> great because like they suck isn't it isn't it yeah. it's not comedy that's not comedy so yeah um <laughs> It's a sh yeah, parody movies never quite recovered. And to be fair, like the the reason like parody movies work is when they're not like imitating a specific movie. It's like when they're doing like a pastiche sort of thing. They're making fun of like sort of like a genre. I think is really only when it works, which is why Walk Hard works is because they're imitating, you know, biopics. And I can't think of like like I feel like parody movies became outdated once like current movies became like very meta like there was like a sort of point i think probably after like scream kind of was a, like a meta horror movie which I, I was which is weird because like scream was like a meta horror movie and then scary movie is parodying scream sort of i think scary movie was just straight up just parodying all horror movies but they were doing it in the style of like Oh, who's that? Whoa, business father who is also business daddy in disguise. Welcome. Thank you for wow. the, Don't thank you for the sub. Whoa, whoa. Scary movie was just scary movies in general, um, but they were what? doing it in the style of like, what? Of Scream? No, I was going to say like in the style of like, um, like a Mel Brooks, like Spaceballs or something where it's like, we're going to take this, this genre. I know that one's Star Wars, but it's all sci-fi. Yeah, they kind of do a little bit We're of Star take Trek this genre there, and then just do rapid fire jokes. Yeah, but wh which came first, Scary Movie or Scream? Because like Scary Movie, their killer's I mask, because their killer's mask is basically like the Scream mask, but like the dude's got like goofy eyes. He's like, ha ha ha, you know, and that's the mask. So, but, yeah, so it's uh, like Scream came first, but Scream is also really popular right when that came out too. Yeah, but it's like it's it's weird because like Scream was already I guess Scream is very specifically making fun of like serial killer movies, but so is like Scary Movie was like spe like Scary Movie One at least was very specifically like making fun of how, well I know what you did last summer, Scream. Uh, it's been a while since I've seen Scary Movie, so, so I don't I mean, even remember. The, the, the Poltergeist they did all sorts of stuff. They did just, okay. Like, digging into. Digging into the the annals. Yeah, don't say that, dude. Look like at the multiles. <laughs> um, Digging deep in the annals. Whoa! What? what? Getting like all the polyps. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but yeah, so it's it just it's it's interesting because it's almost like scary movie is kind of almost redundant, except for the fact that they did cast like a wider net. But I don't know. It's weird to parody like yeah. he, it's it's when movies are being like meta and sort of calling out their own genre like parody movies kind of become unnecessary in that sense because it's like okay well yeah so I don't know it's and a lot of I feel like it worked in like a different era like like the like variety show type like like Mel Brooks the yeah. like the uh I forget who the guy who did um 
the airplane or airplane and like naked gun i forget the guy's name yeah um, um and like i don't like, like top secret like they're making Ferelli? these things were they like, Ferelli production no i don't think so okay um then like even like hot shots those were like less popular and then there were some after like they made like mafia i don't know if you remember that um yeah, I I mean, they've been mafia. making these things forever yeah you don't need to it sucks i think but at the I... end like somebody like like they're remaking the scene from like the godfather but like the he goes and kills like barney instead like they're full on doing the oh, like boy. it's paris hilton let's drop a safe on their head it's like barney just gets <laughs> killed in like a mafia movie for no reason the precursor um, yeah so they've been doing it a long time huh you know just, what i'd say you know is the genre that you could probably make a, a proper parody of nowadays is the superhero genre because it's like so oversaturated and there is a formula. You either do the Marvel formula or you do like the DC thing where you're trying to like be dark and gritty, but you make it shitty. And it's like all just like a fucking CGI like garbage mess, you know? You could yeah. probably make a solid like proper parody movie where you're like, you know, sticking it to a full genre. There's a, there's a lot of like, I don't know if parody is the right term, but a lot of shows now that are like capitalizing on that and making like a different, like The Boys is like. Yeah. It's like, but you could, I mean, use your superhero movie, but like, there's, it's dark. It's kind of like, you know, The Watchmen or something. If if I were to do like a parody of like Marvel, mo like superhero movies, I would do like most of it like making fun of Marvel movies and kind of like following that formula, and and then I would have like one scene where like somebody tries to like save or like do something like minor, like save a event, like a, a like a little like cocktail party from going wrong, and then just everyone ends up exploding into like bloody chunks everywhere and be like, oh my god. And then you move back to making fun of like because like you could easily every one of these things kind of has their like flavors that you could still sort of give a proper send up to because it is such like a a saturated market like the differences and the similarities all stick out so much i think there's a scene in the last season of the boys where there's like this guy who's like ant-man and he basically you may know this oh yeah you, we talked about this Okay, I don't need to get into that. We've talked about it on the show. But <laughs> the, the funny thing saying, is, like, doing, is that I predicted it. Over there. As you were like, there's this crazy scene in The Boys, and I'm like, what, did a guy like did you do this thing? And you're like, yes, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, and I'm like, that is, that's, that that's crazy. Who could have guessed? <laughs> that's a fun show. And then, like, uh, Invincible's back, too, which reminds me, i got to watch the newest episode. That Invincible great. and The Boys, you could probably throw them both in the same sort of parody pile. Like, you could send up they, both of those at the same time. They take themselves time. seriously, so I don't know if it counts as a parody. Like, they're like a... No, 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 I'm saying, like, you could send up the... drama when they want to be drama. You could send up The Boys and Invincible in, like, the same scene. Because they're both kind of doing the thing where it's like, what if superheroes, but fuck it, people exploded all the time, but it was bloody. People were dicks, yeah. So like you could you could easily do a parody of like if you were to do like superhero movie the parody like a proper one, um, yeah, you could easily like send up both of those in the same scene. But yeah, um, the latest uh, the latest Mortal Kombat has I think it's DLC or something. But there's Homelander in it. There's yeah I saw um, that. There's uh, Omni Man, which is invincible, mm -hmm. and there's uh john cena's peacemaker so that's pretty fun i love all those things peacemaker was great we just finally watched it it's been out for like two or three years we just finally watched it. it's really fun i recommend it nice yeah i i, I listened to a podcast of it's called the cast and the curious or something like that it's it's part of that that small beans network of podcasts i keep like telling people about because i like their their podcasts but it's like a Fast and the Furious like podcasts and uh, the the latest episode was um about you know Fast X and they like described John Cena in Fast X as basically like being Peacemaker <laughs> which is funny yeah they're right I mean I watched two different podcasts talk about the movie and they both made that comment and I made that comment too actually when I watched it it's very yeah. true because that's kind of who he is he's like the he's like fuck yeah let's get in my stupid car and like like he's like listen to like metal while he's like or like some like he's listening to like he's listening white to Snake, NSYNC he's or like something like cruising that around and is like oh, in and that but I'm just saying and the other one he's like all into like 80s like hair band music like right. especially like bands you've never heard of that's kind of the bit the whole movie they're real songs real bands but he's his favorite shit is just like these 
80s hair bands you've never heard of i'm just like so excited to listen to him and um i don't know he has he has a pet eagle that is like his best friend and he like thinks he's this like real patriotic entity but he's just like he's kind of a bad guy (laughs) it's fun yep that Uh, i recommend it but uh but yeah he's very he's very like that john cena's character in, in fast and furious is very similar yeah but yeah, I don't know. I think of all of the if the, if someone were to make a parody movie nowadays, I think the only genre you could do a prop. Okay, so I, I guess you could probably ever, like movies have sort of settled into their current tropes. I guess because that's when you need to make a parody movie is when a movie is settled in to like a series of tropes that you can so- sort of rely upon to like exist. So like if you were to do like a parody of action movies, you could probably throw in like some proper Fast and the Furious parody in there. Uh, you'd have to do John Wick a little bit, but like, you know, again, not like mo- mocking specific scenes, but like mocking like the tropes that these like, cause like at, yeah. at this point it's interesting. Cause like when parody movies were done back then, usually the movies that they were parodying had maybe a sequel, maybe two sequels at the most nowadays, like there's 10 fast and the furious movies. You could do like a parody of action movies and you could like, pick and choose specific tropes from like specific franchises and people would immediately understand what you're making fun of without ever having to like recreate specifically a scene from those movies that is true um which is just which is just interesting um it's like a you could like parody movies are dead but they're also you could still pull them off nowadays there was a period of time where like movies were going through this thing where like instead of just straight up doing the tropes movies were doing this thing where they'd like do the trope they'd play it straight but then they'd have somebody be like oh it's just like that thing they do with the movies and you'd be like up see they're they're self-aware i have to call it out they're self-aware they know what they're doing it's it's it they're absolved of their sins because they're self-aware and now movies have kind of like decided being self-aware is sometimes Lame. fine but for the most part like they've kind of stopped doing it so now you could sort of like settle back because like as long as the movie is self-aware it eliminates the need for parody but now the movies are also self-aware but they're self-aware enough to not call it out like the reason we love fast and the furious movies is because they're so stupid and they know they're so stupid that they just lean into the stupidity but they don't call it out which is what makes them so great they know they're so stupid but you they would never admit it exactly they play it like they're making some high art it, like drama thing and it's great yeah it's 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 it's, it's better that way but that that also opens the door once again for now you can give them a proper parody because they're not always calling out the stupid shit they're doing they're just leaning into it so you could you know yeah it's like a weird it's like an arms race yeah. of, of meta <laughs> is when you don't want to accidentally make something like like if you're trying to parody like over the top action and then you make like sharknado or something where it's like yeah shark oh, you're God. trying to make a bad movie like that's dumb those are the worst quick, i want to read the, some of the chat um oh, yeah, go ahead. bill the rocket says what if superheroes but grungy i mean dc's been attempting that for about a decade yeah with no real luck the latest Absolutely batman no looks very i i thought the latest batman was fine it's was, it was watchable it was, i don't think it was like bad but i mean it's robert pattinson riding around listening to nirvana and it's like motorcycle yeah. like, like, <laughs> i'm the bat I am the knight. I'm so conflicted. You don't understand how conflicted I am. Only Kurt Cobain knows. <laughs> Something in the way. Um, but and Lotus Clock also says the newest Mortal Kombat should have also had Shaggy. They should have actually. They're like you know the fact if they have like you know Peacemaker, they're kind of like tongue in cheek a little bit. Like they, they wouldn't yeah. be out of the realm of fun and possibility it's just it would be hard getting the licensing right because like what was it wb or something is not going to give away their character getting have his like spine ripped out they're not gonna they, do, yeah. they don't want the visual of shaggy ripping out a spine or having a spine ripped out they yeah as they can't i do as much as we want to see like because there's that classic clip of like shaggy somehow going like he's like unlocked his third eye or something like that so he's like beating up people in a bar in the cartoon um I don't know if you've seen that clip. I have. That's what okay. kind of starts the meme, right? Kickstarter. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you could, you know, sort of, that opens up the space for Shaggy to be, like, in a fighting game. Oh, but yeah, like, WB's not gonna, they're not gonna do that. They're not I'm gonna sure if it. WB was like, 
Let's do it. I'm sure Mortal Kombat would be like, fuck yeah, let's do it. But they're not going to get... It's, it's hard, though, because okay. Nether Realms makes the Mortal Kombat games. Nether Realms makes all the Injustice games, which is owned by WB. So it's like Nether Realms oh. is sort of tangentially related, which is why I think they're able to get... Because I, th I think, uh, what, Omni... I guess they're owned by Amazon for Invincible, but, like... Yeah. Nether Realms is sort the of, like... The is also Amazon. Yeah, Nether Realms is sort of, like, WB adjacent. In a sense. But I wonder how much of it has to do with, like... We don't want this character doing that thing. Cause it's oh, yeah, thing. It's, it's a thousand percent that, but, you know... It's there, like the, cause like what they had fucking Rick and Morty and Space Jam Two, which was, you know, right. a whole thing. Sure. Um. Sure. Yeah. Uh. So, anyways, <sighs> it, it's possible. <laughs> God, I hated that movie. <laughs> that was I, such a bad movie. I, my brain erased it. Very it was quick. so bad, and like, the part that I think was the most offensive to me, aside from like that one, like montage essentially of them kind of going through and saying hey look what all the properties we own was the end where they're doing like the final game and it's just like such it's it's such cgi barf constantly i just like yeah. it's so ugly i've never seen i've seen some ugly movies it's, that might be <laughs> one of the ugliest fucking like they tried to make a like scenes. Oh. like a like five thousand man crowd of licensed characters and they're all just like ugly moving and then like you know there's no way to like actually create that in a good way so like yeah so like every time they do it it's like reuse things so like every time you see the crowd it's like <laughs> the same animations like the stuff you've seen pasted <laughs> in a different spot like you're watching like an audience in like a basketball video game yeah and they're all wearing the same, like, like they're all wearing like the spirit halloween versions of like their costumes you know <laughs> it's true it looks it's so true. bad it looks so bad that, mo that whole movie was the best the 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 most I remember talking with Austin about this, but, like, the best acting in the movie was in, like, the scene where they're, like, kind of proposing to LeBron James that he do a thing or whatever, and LeBron James is like, what? No, that's dumb. And, like, that's, like, a scene, and, I, like, that was the most convincing acting that LeBron James did, and I have to wonder if yeah. they were, like, telling him the premise of the movie, and they just recorded his reaction to it. They're like, this is good. This is real acting right here. Oh, yeah, this have is Have you good. seen the videos of, it's like, um whatever one of the basketball games like 2k blah 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 whatever anyways they they have all these like scenes where you're like in the locker rooms and you're talking with the other players and there's like drama oh and, like, yeah i love those they're, they're so talking. fucking but funny they had they had the real players do the voice acting so anytime yeah. you talk to these actors or not actors the opposite these basketball players they have the real basketball player reading it and everybody in the chat should look this up if you haven't seen Please this do. because it's hilarious but like the they're literally like they have a voice actor for your player and you're like yeah that's what you get if you you know you mess with me you're gonna lose and then then the the person's like you're really getting uh oh ahead of yourself you, you your head's too big uh you can you you, <laughs> you will not beat us next time like the re you can see you can feel them reading off a piece of paper and they also just like you know they're like my contract says I only have to do one reading, so they weren't like, "All right, try it again," but more real. Like, there's no direction. They were like, they took whatever they. They yeah. probably didn't even record it in person. Oh, that I doubt it. They probably did it over the phone. Just send in, read this, send it in. Yeah, it's so like terrible. It's it's awesome. It's if great. you ever if you ever wonder why Peyton and Eli Manning like popped off as much as they did, like why they got featured on Saturday Night Live like more than Tom Hanks did. It's it's because like they were the only like athletes in a very long time who were able to like read a line with any sort of charisma. Um, yeah, because you can throw a ball good doesn't make you a good yeah actor or like you know or even I'm not saying they're good actors, but you know what I mean. Like it doesn't no, mean yeah. you can do. They're any better kind than of, like the the others yeah, at least. Yeah, they they can they can I say a line. I don't think they do with, like a feature film, but they can read a line. They get the idea. It's like you know you watch wrestlers and the few that are like can actually act rise right to the top and move on to like their movie career i feel like wrestling is kind of like a springboard to that and a lot of them want that in the same way that like comedians want to like get their sitcoms and yeah. stuff like that um yeah. but uh you see like the few that were like clearly great showmen on the wrestling they all get like 
they move on to movies eventually. Yeah. And to be fair, like, at least WWE... So, speaking of wrestling, you know this, but uh, I went to a local wrestling event. And it was interesting seeing, like, they were doing a lot of the stuff that WWE does, where it's like they have a storyline going. They've got people being heels, which is the wrestling term for being a bad guy. They got people being the baby faces, which is the wrestling term for being a good guy. Um, there's the crowd participation. It was like in a like there was like two rows seated around like for each side of the of the ring, and like most of the seats were filled. But like very small time event, not a lot of people in the crowd. So it was, it was interesting seeing like the low budget sort of like version of what you would get at like you know, sort of the more televised wrestling events. Um, and it, it was interesting because, like, it puts into stark contrast, like, the difference between, like, local wrestling and, like, the stuff you see on television, but also, uh, you know, again, like, the showmanship that goes into all of it. It was very interesting. Um, hmm. Yeah, I would love to go to a, like, it a was super fun. Yeah. wrestling event. And almost, I feel like... I feel like what you did would be better than the like big one because you can actually see it. I feel like I, I mean, I'm never going to pay for like front row seats at like a WWE event. So, oh God, no. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like a local one, you actually get to sit up close and it'd be fun. Yeah, it was, it was fun. Um, they had like, if I had, if I had two complaints, if I could lodge some, uh, I think I you can, or if I could at least make some recommendations to the people who are running, uh, that particular they wrestling watching, event. So. Yeah. Uh, oh, so hey guys, check it out. So here's my complaints: is one, an over reliance on pinning, and then like the person kicking out, and then the guy arguing with the ref. With the ref. That was three. They did that like so much every match, and I'm like, we get it. You think it was a three count? It was a two count. Okay, like we get it. There was one guy who made it like his <laughs> shtick in the match, and that was fine. Where like every time they would pin and the guy would kick out on two the guy the, like the, the 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 bad guys of the group the main guy who was like really vocal would be like that was three and then we would shout back two and you'd go three and we'd go two and that was a thing That's and that fun. was that was fun but then like they like every match was somebody would pin somebody the person would kick out at two and then the guy would like argue with the ref for like a minute being like that was three come on what the ref and it was kind of like we get it okay you think it was three do it like one match but you can't you you can't you do that too much. Um, sure. And then uh, gotta, have, gotta have more uh, things to pull out of you know pull out of your yeah. sack than just and, that one. Yeah. Bit. And it was kind of like a funny recurring joke sort of thing. But like you know we would boo the bad guys because like audience participation is such a vital part of wrestling. Um, and you're supposed to boo the bad guys like they make themselves so booable. But like. It was it was funny, but at the same time, I kind it kind of got old. But like people would boo the bad guys, and the bad guys would yell "shut up" at the at the crowd, and it was funny. But also like you know, after the fifth time, it kind of loses its its luster, you know. That takes me back to like my days, like calling insect to school or getting called insect to school, staying home watching like Maury and 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 uh, <laughs> yeah. Jerry Springer, and that's every time somebody would come out, the crowd would boo them, and they'd be like "shut up." <laughs> yeah same thing i mean jerry springer is wrestling it's basically wrestling it's, it's yeah. the same thing yeah it's, it's as fake it's uh or I, I don't know i i think most of it was fake i'm sure there was like one or two i think most of it was fake yeah i'm sure there was like one or two real <laughs> like people on there like every year or something like that but yeah it was it was pretty much fake um but yeah it was it was a good time though i mean i i feel like the it's it's hard in wrestling for the good guy to be interesting like you have to try yeah and and so like a lot of the times what would happen in the matches is the bad guy would have all the personality and just like really play up being a dick which is great you know you know they, they did a good job playing up being a dick you really got a sense of who was the heels who was the babies just by like how much of a dick the bad guys were um, but it was tough because the the good guys then didn't really have a lot of bags of tricks to get you on their side particularly like the only reason you were on their side is because the other side was like the bad guy so it's like you're on the not bad guys side um except for the final the final match the you know the baby face of that match did manage to get us like sort of more on his team because he again he was kind of rolling off of the bad guy but um like he would kind of like 
he was like being agile around the bad guy like ducking his stuff and kind of like pulling tricks on him kind of like some bugs bunny shit and then like that kind of got you on the like side a girl <laughs> yeah <laughs> The other wrestler fall in love with him and then kiss him on lips and then be hit him with like a uh, fish <laughs> yeah fish or an anvil yeah um but for the most part the the good guys needed a little something they needed a little bit of oomph to kind of get you sort of like you know you needed more reason to root for them and that's that's those are my two main complaints is too much reliance on the those three and uh, the good guys kind of bland if i was a good guy wrestler i think my bit would be Either I'd be like, I would, you'd have to lean into it extra so that you're almost like a, yeah, fun to watch because how like over the top good good you are. Like I'd be like, yeah. you have to go like paladin where you're just like, I couldn't possibly do anything like wrong or, or or like it's like my code. Or you'd have to like be like the like, I'm doing this for America, like the patriot type style of a wrestler. <laughs> like, like just, just you think you think you're like the good guy, but you're just like, I mean. That's kind of like a whole peacemaker character, but like you know, you're played off as the good guy, and you think you are just just because like you think you have this like I don't know higher calling or something like that. But yeah, yeah. other than that, I, I feel like you have to find like a clever way to be the good guy, or else you're just bland. Yeah, and uh, the way the way that the final match the the guy kind of like got across that he was the good guy was just being trickier and goofier and kind of like more affable but he also didn't say a word like so it was weird because like they also did a thing where they had a, uh, a little like uh acting thing you know whenever they they talk to each other they have the little shouting match they had one at the very beginning and then they had one at the very end and that kind of like set up the the show and and it was a good bookend but it was like the the bad guys were always saying shit they, the bad guys were always like playing up the badness but then the good guys never really got a chance to say much so you kind of had a root for them mm. based on like how acrobatic they were and like okay so that's that's lame that they're not giving them like a chance i was thinking yeah. other other interesting things you could do you could make like a fun story like over the top storyline like the bad guy wrestler like kidnap my kid and i <laughs> i need to save him like or like you know like a like a you know turn it into like die hard or something yeah i i think um First of all, I like uh, what Business Father is saying, where it's like, hey guys, let's, why do we gotta fight? Let's all get along, let's hug it out, and the pantomiming being like a silly little guy, which is kind of what the final match did, the guy kind of pantomimed being a silly little guy, and like the the bad guy was like wearing pants that had like dollar bills on the on the pattern, and like, you know, yelling at people and like showing off his watch. All, the bad guys were good, like it's, it's easier to be a ham if you're being a bad guy, because you just have to like yeah. act big, it's, it's easier much easier character to write yeah um i watch especially when the sport is fighting <laughs> yeah um and like throwing each other around the ring like impossibly yeah. but uh there's, one there's a lot more uh motivations for a bad guy in a, sp in a fighting sport than there are yeah. a good guy yeah because it's like fighting is kind of inherently not necessarily a good guy thing to do um right so it's tough, but like one one thing that I, I've enjoyed is uh, uh, Moist Critical on, on YouTube has been like doing these wrestling matches and they've been kind of like keeping it interesting by first of all just being even goofier than normal. Like the one match, the guy like gets his soul trapped inside of like a bottle or something like that. It's like a whole thing. And then I like love that. it's great. And then like the most recent match was a library match where they're wrestling in a library, but they can't be loud because they're in a library. <laughs> <Pretty quiet. laughs> <laughs> so See, yeah that's what you gotta do that's what you gotta do on the small on the small scale because you don't have the resources so you gotta just like pick like you have to be over the top i think that's yeah what I would absolutely do if i was running a like smaller wrestling thing yeah and, and you then, see a lot of that like if you watch like youtube videos there's like it's like the characters are like almost like magic you know like sometimes or they're like supernatural yeah. in some ways like there's like i hypnotize my people you know just they do like wackier shit because they have a lower budget and you know they're that's how you they do the it, money though. to make like a giant pyrotechnic show with like a million people watching yeah you can't set up like you know john cena doing a mind battle with his past selves because like a psycho clown <laughs> yeah. uh, is trapped him I mean, in his mind could, palace. But it, it would have to be like <laughs> homemade <laughs> homemade uh props yeah 
Uh-oh, business daddy says, every time I navigate away, I get another ad roll. Dang, we ran that pre-roll for what? nothing then. What the hell? I guess we should stop doing that. Yeah, I mean, I was, unless, we I mean, don't... I guess Twitch is lying. <laughs> we'll look That's... into it, but the only reason we do the three minutes in the beginning is because we thought it would free up anybody who joins later. That's yeah. kind of the way it's supposed to work, but I haven't, you know, confirmed or denied that it does. According to Twitch, if you run the three minutes of ads, no one gets hit with pre-roll for like an hour, which, you know, thanks Twitch for lying, I guess. Jeez. Um, Jeez. Uh, Quaker Man. Oh, I would love to see a pacifist, reluctant wrestler character, Quaker Man. That would actually be a great persona for wrestling. That would be good. Doesn't want to fight. Yeah, it doesn't he want to fight, to. but has to every time. Um, I don't know if Orange Cassidy is a good guy or a bad guy in wrestling, but his character makes for a great good guy character because he his hands are just always in his pocket and he does like acrobatic moves without taking his hands out of his pocket. And his like his whole thing is like just being completely like neutral and blank all the time. Um And I think that that is a good that's a good gimmick, I think. Yeah, seems fun. Yeah. And I, th I think, uh, again, it's easier to be a bad guy than to be a good guy because, again, f you're you're fighting, so, so it's kind of like a thing. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It would be interesting trying to decide what would be the... Because we've, we've sort of... I haven't edited it together, which is why we haven't done an episode two yet of Draw Bomb Sponsored Violence. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. The DSV! Um, wait, uh... It worked really well. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. I just, I, I just got to edit it together, but you know, it's, it's, it's tough. That's it's tough. Good, no rush. It feels like a rush because it, it has been like we, we recorded that in June, and it's like, man, it's been so long. Yeah, but, <laughs> I mean, you have other things you're working on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but oh, our my high school mascot was Quaker Man. Our football team did not win ever. Oof. Well. I think we can all blame it on Quaker Man. And because yeah. you can't buy alcohol in a grocery store. Son of a... I think Anyways. to be a good, a good, good guy, you need a great storyline to back you up. It can't yeah. be your character. It's the character doesn't can't do the heavy lifting as much. It has to be whatever situation he's put in. Because, I mean, if his whole character is just, like, being morally good... Yeah. That leaves, you know... Obviously, you can be more creative than that, but still, like... It's, I think it relies all on the story you put them in. Yeah, it's 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 about the story. That's why they have the storylines. Is... So they have to be just kind of a normal guy. Yeah, that, that's why they have like those storylines and, and arcs and stuff like that is because you can set the stakes for the good guy without having to have like him be an over the top character. You kind of just have to have them be like chill guy who's getting fucked with by the bad guy, you know? Yeah. Um, but I mean, I think you could, if you were to come up with like a decent character who, cause like you had to be likable. And so it's like, how do you make a likable character is you have a fun gimmick. You kind of have like a, like there is, um, so there is like one women's match at the wrestling event I was at last night. And the, the okay. first person who came out, her personality was much more bubbly. She was like much more like peppy and like, hi guys, sort of like attitude. So like she kind of came off as the good guy of that match because the next person who came out was like voguing and doing like supermodel shit and like just kind of like her personality was like i'm hot and i'm i'm i'm, I'm standoffish and then the, the final person who came out who was like the who had the belt was like just mean <laughs> and so it was like they're the, she's the bad guy she's kind of like whatever she's just kind of neutral kind of like teetering on like being overly confident it's generally like the confidence, the, the level of confidence is like what determines the bad guy. Cause like the, the bad guy yeah. is always just like, oh, I'm going to win. Huh. Uh, fuck you. I'm, I'm a winner. She was a woman and confident. Yeah. Seems like a villain Great. to me. What a evil, evil woman. No, but, um, you know, the one who came out and was like, hi. And like, she was like sh shaking people's hands, high fiving the girls and all that stuff. Like she kind of came off as being the good guy because her, per her, yeah. her costume like is your brighter. Fans, that can be your. Yeah, that can be your good guy thing. Like John Cena's whole thing is like, you know, Being like, like I, a wish guy. I'm a, yeah, I'm like a, I love my fans, and I love America. <laughs> yeah, and I also I am a wrestler, love to the truest sense. Where it's like, 
his whole you know he he came out just shy of like having like the headgear you know yeah um but yeah it's interesting it's interesting Great. the dynamics that go into into all that but it's it's always it's funny how vital it is to have like that sort of good guy bad guy dichotomy in wrestling because it does make the match that much more worth it to watch you know yeah it's got to be interesting yeah i mean watching people like do ac acrobatics is is interesting to begin with but people are there because it's like a it's like a um acrobatics mixed with like a soap opera stage yeah show exactly thing. yeah um but yeah so i don't know I don't, uh hometown wrestling a lot of fun the costumes were a lot better than i expected um which is great because i was like going in and sort of expecting the costumes to be really shabby but now whoever they got who's doing like the tailoring and stuff like that they're doing a good job the costumes looked like legit wrestling attire and i, and I was happy to see that because i feel like the costumes are also a huge part of why i love wrestling is it's just like oh look this goofy outfit yeah. that no one would ever actually wear yeah it's like it's like halloween it's fun to see people's like creativity and stuff like that in different ways and see the stuff yeah. they the characters they create and the costumes and all that i love it i love it all. yeah super fun um so yeah if you if you have local hometown wrestling i i recommend going and and the the storyline was super fun because it's like when the when the the general quote unquote, the quote unquote general manager came out and he's like wearing a suit and he comes out to like a fucking like Kate Bush sounding remix of All Star by Smash Mouth. Um, and he's like talking about like, oh, hey, blah, blah, blah. there's like a title match between these two guys. Um, there's there was a little bit of like talking between like the, the champion and the bad guy and the bad guy won because you have to have the bad guy win a few matches. Um, sure. And then that to be a threat. That'd be a threat. And you have, they have to keep you on your toes. Like, you can't expect the good guy to win every time because, you know, that's boring. Uh, but the uh, the final match was the general manager's like, I've brought my brother out. And so the brother came out. <laughs> and the, the brother's wearing, like, so, like, the, the general manager's wearing, like, a, bl a nice blue suit. The brother comes out. He's wearing, like, a fancy yellow suit. And it's, like, very over the top. Um, and then the brother's like, I you are sleeping on your number one champion so i bought him he's part of my roster and he's gonna kick your guys butt. and then you know the, the bad guy comes out and he's like got the money on his pants he's like yeah i'm the best i'm the best kissing his biceps um it was very fun i, I was really he the best he was not no he lost <laughs> oh okay well, he lied he did um but no it was a, it was a lot of fun i highly recommend um, it was a good time. I don't think there's any local chapter for me, but I, could, I should check Grand Rapids. There might be some there. I I, I would be I surprised know. if they did, because like I was surprised to find out that like 15 minutes from me is like a wrestling event that happens actually fairly regularly. Like I did not ex like I don't know for my town huh. maybe it's not I'm so surprising, but like we're a very small town next to a surprising. bunch of very small towns. You know, this in a small town creativity is not usually like a thing like theater basically it's not really a thing it's usually more like function yeah you know so it's it's surprising to me i mean i don't know that much about your town i visited one time but it just i'm surprised i i would uh i wouldn't think there'd be any in my town i live in like a little like kind of touristy like like um like uh lake town like like very conservative i don't think there's a wrestling thing here <laughs> but i hope there is i'll go to that yeah i'll look into it Look into it. It's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I'd no, love to go to that. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a blast. And you know, I, I went with my dad and one of my dad's friends, who was the guy who was like, "Hey, there's wrestling. You should come." I was like, "Okay." Uh, dad was like, "I'm never going to that again." <laughs> and I'm like, "Whatever." <laughs> but uh, it was a lot of fun. He doesn't like wrestling. He's just like you know, there's no. just too much violence. <laughs> yeah it's not a wrestling guy it was it was kind of like the thing where it's all right he was he was pretty close-minded to the whole experience from the get-go i mean sure he went you know he hung out for the whole thing but uh yeah i don't i don't i didn't expect him to get on board at any point during it i, I didn't think anything was going to change his mind and that's fine that's fine yeah 
I get it. I also think it's like it's about the mindset because I think it's like wrestling is kind of famously campy. Yeah. You have to be in. I don't know that that show was, but I feel like you have to be in it the was. mood for no, it absolutely campy was. shit because like that's the whole vibe, and not everybody's into that. A lot of people mm-hmm. are like, "Well, that looked like shit," and you're like, "Well, yeah, that's why it was great." Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not to say that they're they're like wrestling moves and their like skills were like shit but i'm just saying like the kind of like the storylines and stuff they feel a little fake and like you know yeah. maybe it doesn't look like they're actually bashing each other's heads in that's okay it's just fun like it's, it's yeah you there for the yeah exactly it's theater and that was, that's the actually that's where i kind of turned the corner on wrestling because i was i was into wrestling as a kid back when i thought it was or i thought it was real or they were at least putting on airs that it was real and then you know you kind of realize oh wrestling's fake and then I was like, oh, wrestling's dumb. It's not even, they're not even really beating each other's heads in. And then, like, I think there was, like, a while where wrestling was still trying to pretend like it was real. And then there's a point where everyone knew that wrestling was fake. And then wrestling decided, like, well, if we're fake, we might as well just fucking lean into that. And then, you know, ever since then, wrestling has been, like, just amping it up. Like, not even trying to pretend like they're real. Just doing, like... Like, they give... It's, it's like the Fast and the Furious thing, where, like they don't call attention to the fact that it's fake because then you ruin sort of the magic, the, the, the soap opera-ness of it. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's a thousand percent fake. Like it's obvious and they, they yeah. know it. We in know that it. world, it's real. Yeah. And it's, it's, it makes it ever since they've been leaning in to the fakeness of it and like, you know, using that as an excuse to like, ah, we just do whatever we want now. It's, it's better. <laughs> it's, it's more fun. Good move for them too. They probably have less, their lawyers probably have to do less work uh, with all the like paralyzed, True. Kids, like throwing each other through tables in the backyard and stuff like that. Also very true. Just be like, nah, it's, don't don't do this shit. It's not real, okay? Anyway, yeah. start the show. <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, it's 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 fun stuff. I I like it. Cool. Yeah, I've been meaning to ask how the show went. It was a good time. It was a good time. It was great. It was a good time. All right. Maybe I can draw a little quick. Little little satellite right there. Satellite. Love, love. All right. Let's see. How you feeling about this picture? I think it's great. Look, I think great. we're good. All right. Yeah, it's some little little different colored speckles there. Now, Just now, a couple. A now this is a finished picture right here. I feel like. Well, I guess it makes sense for him floating away. But I was going to say, I feel like a planet like where you could see the curve that intensely, that's that small. <laughs> you just fall off of it. And he did, I guess. He did. Oh, there yeah, you go. he fell off. Um, Cool. Uh, should we take a quick break and then we'll be back and figure out what the hell we're going to do for yes. a, a second half? Sounds good. All righty, Rooney. Uh, we'll be back, folks, to talk more wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's safe. Hello, folks. Welcome back to another episode of the Save episode of Drop Bub. Um, I thought uh, we we were thinking about what game we could do or something we could do uh, for the second half of the show. And uh, one thing we did a while back that we could do again is we could play a game where we take a sprite and then we create it in full resolution you know what i mean yeah uh, um, once with uh i think it was castlevania it was, that was fun i like was it. it was it castlevania shit because that's exactly what i pulled I up so. last time <laughs> um give me it a was, sec uh, the guy with the whip the fun, the different. oh yeah one. well i just posted one in the in the draw pile it's up in the top left corner oh, okay um but I'm gonna see if I can so get small. a certainty. Well, yeah. Um, you I can, need my binoculars. We can always make it bigger, but I'm trying to find. Okay, if I go to this, I remember playing Castlevania Two. Like double Dragon characters. Ooh, we could do Double Dragon. We could try and do that one guy. Um. Which one? <laughs> You know, the guy with the face, he was in the movie. Oh, yeah. I remember that guy with that face. 
Um, sec, this game, this, uh, 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 uh. I'm trying to find Castlevania 2 specifically because I had a copy of that as a child. Simon's Quest. Enemies. Some uh, of these guys that would be interesting, um, like this one, or actually, one second. These guys are, <laughs> are always funny looking. Which guys? Oh, oh yeah, that that's that that one guy on the right is one who I was talking about. So how about this? I draw one of them, and you draw the other one. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. All right, who do you want to pick? Uh, I'll do the one on the left. Okay. He's got kind of like a weird, like roided up Danny Trejo look to him. He does kind of look like Danny Trejo. I was thinking that a little bit too. It's the mustache, I think, really. Yeah. They both, they have, are they brothers? They have matching mustaches. <laughs> they do. Um, also, hey, Daily Dana, welcome. Thanks for being here. Hey. What, 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 uh, so when you were on the Sprite website, it said the guy's names, right? Because they have like a name. Oh. Um. It's like Goro or something like that, or... Google just I was just doing Google image search so I didn't get oh, that, see. but uh it doesn't matter, it's not like we're gonna put the name on their chest or anything like that. You can look it up in a little bit. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll look it up in all minutes. Get the doodle. He's got a very round head. Yeah, he does. Like a like a basketball. These guys are brothers, that's that's a fact. Yeah, if they're not related, then it's very strange. It was also weird the way they were portrayed in the Double Dragon movie. What the um, fuck? Is that who that was supposed to be? Because it looked like a weird, like... I don't know. I yeah. don't even know what that looked like. It's like a Koopa it's from like like the Mario Brothers movie or some shit. <laughs> yeah, it did. It was some weird... It's some weird shit with that. But I think they... I remember them saying his name. Like, they called him by his name in the movie. So I was like, he's supposed to be that weird guy? Movie. Yeah, weird movie. Not entirely without its charms, though. It was it was fun in in some ways. Yeah, it's fun. It was fun to watch, from what I remember. Mostly. Yeah. Wasn't gonna win any awards, but it was a good time. These kind of guys kind of got like a Wario, Waluigi vibe to them. <laughs> they do, yeah. Wah. I'm a gonna win. I know, uh, I think it was Tom Fulp on Newgrounds, he made, like, a game, a fighting game where you play as this guy and he's the good guy. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. That's why I know, like, he has a name, because it was called, like, So-and-So's Quest or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure he has a name. I could probably find it pretty easily, I just didn't bother to look yet. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I will. I'll draw my dude, and then I'll Google his name, I'll find it in, like, a minute or something like that. But, uh, did you ever play any of the Double Dragons? I did. I played a lot of Double Dragon 2, I think. That was the one I had for Nintendo, so I played a lot of it, because it's too young to purchase games, so you just play what you what you own yeah. over and over and over. And plus, you know, Nintendo was like arcade games, so you, they were very replayable. Yeah, they were kind of like you would never win. You would just get so far. Right as far as you can get and that's the whole game um these guys have some real under eye shadows <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh i saw a meme that pointed out the non-binary pride flag looks like the wario land color flag and they will now greet every non-binary person with Wah! that's pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> that's good stuff Another W for the trans community. That's right. Wah! I eat my motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, have you ever eaten a motorcycle? A motorcycle? Um, so I haven't, but isn't there like a some weird dude who's in like Guinness Book, 
world records for just eating like a car and like eating a bike and shit like that. You just like break it down and then chew it up and, and then it, they'd be like, you've done it. A new world record. And he'd like smile and his teeth are just like nubbins because he eats Ugh. metal. I feel like, yes, I feel like I've heard that of that guy, but goddamn. What a claim <laughs> to fame. Yeah. I'm just going to fuck up my stomach with I with like lead. <laughs> He was like old while he was doing it, so I guess he's been doing it for a while, or maybe he hasn't. <laughs> but, maybe uh, that's the secret to to everlasting life. Long is, life. Yeah, is you just eat motorcycles. Least yeah, iron deficient like, guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's. They're like, you have too much iron. You cut some out, please. <laughs> yeah. Too much iron in your diet. Um. I. That seems even sillier as I've gotten older and realized that, like, um, you pay to get like in Guinness, Guinness Book of World Records is kind of like means nothing. Yeah. Not only you pay to get in, but like if you do get in, then what? Like, it doesn't. If you're trying to sell a product, great. <laughs> like, hey, I have the world's best. I made the world's biggest cake. Come buy my cakes or something like that. Stupid shit. Yeah. But like, if you're, if you're just a guy who eats bikes. What is that doing for you? What do you? Now, when you walk down the street, people wave at you. Hey, it's the guy who eats bikes. That's all. Who yeah. gives a shit? What it's a like, waste uh, of time. I don't want that. <laughs> it's like when I won, like, I won the Guitar Hero tournament in my high school. And, like, all it meant was, like, I was at the mall with some friends. The more, or when I say the mall, I mean, like, like a strip mall where there's, like, a grocery store and then there's, like, a, a pizza shop on the other end. Um,. And I ran to some classmates and like, hey, did you win the Guitar Hero contest? I'm like, yeah, like, that's awesome, man. Good job. Oh, thanks, Derek. That was it. <laughs> um, Would you say that was the moment that your life peaked? Uh, you know, I still remember it, so it definitely must have meant something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it, it's, not, it, it's not embarrassing to be, like, happy you won a contest. I just... <laughs> no, I know. A little, a little goofy goof. You're allowed no, to remember I it. I know, but it's like... It was it was a funny moment. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't, I don't cause like there was like a whole thing either earlier this year or it was last year, but like there was a period of time where on YouTube it was like it was like oh wow I can't believe the Guinness Book of World Records is basically fake and that was like sort of the topic. It, it was like how for a while there was like that thing where it's like oh men think of the Roman Empire once a week or something like that and that was kind of like a, a spate of videos that were like going around they were kind of doing that with yeah. um like somebody revealed that the guinness book of world records was basically you pay and then they put you in and it doesn't even matter if you like actually won the record or not and then uh you know you just you basically you also, pay they're just like a private entity they're not like any kind of record keeping thing yeah they don't like keep up they just don't the, keep tabs they sell books that's it that's yeah. it there's books they sell books that's why they exist so it was like for it was like sometime this year or last year where like that was like the topic topic going around the internet where it's just like i can't believe the guinness world records is fake and i was, I was kind of like i don't know how like were they actually keeping on were they actually like calling up people being like hey you still got the longest fingernails you do okay good call <laughs> you next week <laughs> it's like <laughs> we're, we're calling everybody with fingernails and we're we're getting you know yeah making sure you got fingernails or they're long ah uh, those like psh, i've seen longer okay bye <laughs> nothing for you. You, you i i the way i always pictured it like when i was like a kid or something who like maybe thought it was like a real thing not that i felt that betrayed when i found it wasn't because i just never gave a shit really yeah but I um never, never particularly cared uh i always pictured it was like you call them up and then they send someone out to like confirm or deny whether you reach the new thing but there was always so many niche records where it was like able to shoot milk the furthest <laughs> from your eye socket yeah and it's like what the fuck like there's other <laughs> people doing this too yeah and it like it, to be fair that's not far off from the reality of it but like you'd have to like that was pay. a real one Th that was a real one no but like you do call them up and they send somebody over but like you pay them and then it yeah. doesn't matter like you just i mean if you pay them you're pretty much in the book anyway so it doesn't matter so it was kind of like it was, it, you know, the the whole thing was a charade, essentially. Um, yeah. Uh, wait one sec. Um, I got really interested in this 3D Mahjong game while procrastinating for my thesis, and I briefly ranked number one. I was first excited 
and then honestly disappointed about how much time I spent on it. Oop, it'd be like that, it'd be like that. Um, but yeah, I, I just remember that being like, because like, you know, for us maybe it was more obvious that like, it's, it's kind of like a bullshit book, but, uh, yeah, w whenever that topic was going around the internet, there was like a lot of people being like, Oh, my, I feel so betrayed. I didn't know Guinness was basically a pay to get in thing. And I'm like, well, how did you expect it to, to run? Like, <laughs> right. There's no official entity like guarding records. Like we could, we could technically start our own record book. <laughs> we should. Yeah. Draw we, bomb. Draw bombs, uh, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, that, that hasn't been done. Never. Um. Well, there's there's a conversation happening in the chat. Uh. Oh my God! I currently have a pesky sty, and it hurts. And thinking of shooting milk out of Ooh. this hole makes it hurt worse. Oh God! Yeah, I can imagine. Oh no! Sorry. Yeah, I don't think about that. Sorry about that. I'm always worried that I'm gonna get one of those. I haven't gotten one, but like anytime I have like any irritation in my eye, I'm like, oh no. It's oh happening. yeah. <sighs> I'm getting it's the sty. Oh no. Yeah. I feel that I, uh, uh it, I, I, I look like I do a lot of cocaine because I, my nose and my sinuses are so shitty that I blow my nose a lot to the point where like blood vessels have like burst in like multiple spots around my nose. And it's just like, it's just, I just have a shitty sinuses. <laughs> it's, and it's it, it, like, whenever I notice a new one, I'm like, oh, man, come on, blood vessels, oh, keep your shit together. Again. It's also just like I, now I have a big old red spot on my face that no one but me notices. It's like, jeez. Ah, uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> uh, I just randomly messaged you on Discord, not realizing I was already talking to you here. <laughs> oh, talking to, I think business daddy. But um, this is my father and this is my daddy. Yes, business father, business daddy. Um. No, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's interesting that people still believed because I also like, do they still come out with books? Like is, is the Guinness book of world records, like still pumping out editions? I feel like, no, I don't know, but I know, I know they were suing yeah. people who use their logo in like their videos or something like that, or like, you know, copyright claiming them or something like that. They're still doing shit. They should be like, I don't know. They should transition to like the internet. Somehow. Yeah. I'm sure they, they did already. Yeah. I'm sure it's a website now, but, uh, yeah, I think, I think a big reason they came under a lot of scrutiny is because like people were using the Guinness logo as like part of the thumbnail of their videos. And then Guinness would like copyright claim the video or like try and take it down. And then that made people like look into the Guinness book of world records and be like, you guys are copyright are copywriting our videos, but you don't even are, you're not even a fucking real record book. Um, <laughs> But yeah. Did you ever think if you were like playing a game and you were like really good at the game, you'd get a call from the developer sometime and be like, dude, we saw you playing like Banjo Kazooie. Like, you're so good. Come work for our company. <laughs> I don't No, I don't think I ever had that moment. Okay. Uh, but there, I think there's a few movies that are like, that's the plot. Yeah, I think so. I just, I, I, I saw like somebody make that reference. And I, I do remember thinking like back in the day, back, I used to like play a lot of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. And thinking like, man, wouldn't it be cool if like the developers are actually watching you play the game when you play it and then they call you for being really good and then they hire oh, you? Yeah. I, okay, so I genuinely don't think there was ever a time in my life where I was like, I'm really good at video games. <laughs> like even as a kid, <laughs> I was like, I knew I had fun. I loved them and I still do. But I was just like, I'm not good. I'm bad at these. I love them. But I am trash. Yeah, I, I've never I had like false illusions about that personally. Like, there's a lot of things that I thought I was good at as a kid that it turned out I was not. But video games was one I just never assumed I was good at. There, that's probably good. I mean, it's good to not get that in your head because then it's just like, well, guess I should play more video games. And it's like, nah, you you could you could do like productive things with your time if you wanted to. I played plenty, regardless. Yeah, it never stopped me. But you know. I'm just trying to get good, finally. Yeah, you just, you're trying to finally hit that pr uh, pro gamer status, you know? I was really, really good at Counter-Strike Source for a while. 
and like I, I it wasn't like to the point where i was like thinking oh i'm so fucking good at counter strike source i was just good enough at counter strike source where i could join a server and like kick a little bit of ass and like have fun with it and like uh, that was a good time for me um and then i guess i, I don't know what happened exactly because you know you're not like privy to what goes on behind the scenes but like all of a sudden i couldn't connect to servers anymore in the game so i'm assuming that somebody like i i i pulled off like some kind of like impressive shot or like a decent shot on somebody in a match and then they like reported me and so like this guy's wall hacking or something aim botting banned for being too good i was banned for being too good because like i couldn't play because like it wasn't a vac ban because i didn't like they didn't obviously find evidence of me using cheat software but i was not able to log into a server for a year and this was like at the height of me liking and playing counter-strike source like i played every night um, I'm surprised you didn't get it like you didn't look into it. I did know what was going on. I did yeah. everyone was just like ah, oh, it sounds like you're ba your vac band, bro And I'm like I'm like, but I'm not I can play other steam games It's not I'm just unable to play counter-strike It was so weird and then after like a year because like also this is back in the day when like reddit Didn't have the answers for everything and you couldn't like crowdsource. You just kind of had to google and see if like some website had an answer for you or if you were like a member of like the clock crew forum or something like that you could ask them and they'd be like i don't know bro i'm not a counter strike but um yeah, yeah i couldn't play for like a full year and that's so like if anything it was helpful because i was playing a lot of counter strike um and it sucked so like, i couldn't play the game anymore and so because i couldn't play the game anymore i stopped playing it and I just never really got into Counter-Strike ever since then. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it's a good thing that somebody <laughs> stopped that. Made you that. more productive. Yeah, I like to think so. Your, your, your parents just, like, put some black on the computer. <laughs> yeah, like, this our kid plays. He's, he's constantly talking about the terrorists and the counter-terrorists. Um, I heard my son say terrorists win, and I knew <laughs> this game was evil. Oh my god, he kept saying, get owned, scrub noob. I don't know what that is, but it can't be good. <laughs> uh, that's brutal. Get a refund. Shake them down for money. Make them pay. You know, it's a shame. I, I probably could have, like, tried to get a refund, but that was back before Steam had refunds, and it also it came free with Half-Life 2, and I played the shit out of that game, too, so... You know... No one was gonna send me any money. And now, people are pl getting like money being pro gamers in Counter Strike, and I could have been one, you guys. I could have been one. See, so you said maybe it was a good thing. Maybe it, was, it seems like it was a. It was a bad thing. thing. Yeah. It sent, it sent your life down a dark road. I could have been Not a major. Like Counter Strike. Could have been a major league gamer, bro. I could have been on Phase Clan. <laughs> <laughs> wow, they sound cool. Whoever yeah. those guys are, dude, dude, phase up, dude. <laughs> oh, money, you say? Ooh, a whole bit. Thank you. Thank you, Dana. Thank you, Dana. Thank you for the bits. Dana and the bobs. <laughs> Dana, <-da>, Dana. <laughs> Wait, you're welcome? Yeah, you're welcome for the content. Anyways. Uh, whoops, I got it backwards. Oh, well. Yeah, you did. Prego. Isn't it weird that, uh, like, the, like, tomato sauce is, is prego, like, which is basically saying you're welcome in Italian. So it's like, it's, you get the bottle and they're basically saying, you're welcome for the good tomato sauce. Have a pizza. Whoa. I had to pay for the shit. Don't say you're welcome. You're welcome. Prego. <laughs> Yeah, I, for my wallet. Oh, another bit from De La Dana. Long overdue, wow. dudes. Hell yeah, dude. Big spender, watch out. You spoiling us over here. I feel I, I can buy a boat. Do it. Where are you going to go on your boat? Uh. <laughs> Water. Just like a little further out from the shore. I don't really have any <laughs> destinations. Go in the water. Yeah, go and go in the water. Um, these guys' arms are—they don't make a lot of sense. Yeah, I try to draw my guy's arms kind of in the similar position as my sprite, and it—it's weird. I'm yeah, also I'm also going through that right now. 
I'm also not great at drawing like muscly guys. Like I would not make it as a artist on Dragon Ball Z. Um, what if he was like, I'm Melt Man. I was melted, <laughs> but I'm also strong. There my was... anatomical, uh, my figure's correct underneath this melted skin. You know, I did Is watch a show with Melt Man in it. You might Wasn't have too. Uh, Action Team Now or like Action Blam League or Now? Was, what, Action League Now on Kablam. You oh. were you were both correct on both counts. I remember they used to show that at like movie theaters and stuff before movies. Really? A little skit. At least was the it like the, I went to, they would show. Was it like the Nickelodeon was Channel the movies? Like were you going to see Snow Day in theaters? It probably was a Nickelodeon Channel movie. I don't remember what the movies were. I just remember being a kid and being like, oh, hey, it's because I watched Kablam at the at the time. Oh, me too. I was like, oh, hey, it's this. I think the one they always showed was like the one where they like teamed up with Kiss, but they <laughs> showed it at the movie theater for like a, a few different things. Kablam! It was a great, great show. Yeah, it was a great show. A lot of, a lot one of, of my fun. favorites at the time. I just loved the like variety. Yeah, I was a big fan. Um, Prometheus and Bob was great. Yeah, that's one of my favorites for sure. We've talked about that before for sure. Yeah, we definitely talked about Prometheus and Bob. Um, it's interesting. I don't, it, there's like all the, these shows that like we watched as kids and I feel like so many are like not like the only way to track them down is to find like some YouTube channel that like uploaded a yeah. shitty VHS rip <laughs> of them all. Totally. Like you're not going to find Kablam getting, on getting harder now because they're like more, they're finding it saves the money to just throw content in the trash. True. So there's no reason to host some of this stuff. It just vanishes. Yeah. Well, you know, that's why people like upload the videos. Cause like I found all of Mission Hill on a YouTube channel um, this year. Uh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah and it's like out there has it. Has everything. Yeah. Somebody's, I'm, I'm sure there's like a group of people who are like, they saw the fucking tax write-off bullshit that studios are doing coming, so they've been like ripping episodes of TV shows in the in the like I name of preservation. That Coyote movie. Have you seen the news on that? Or no. Info on that? No, I haven't heard about so, that. So WB made a full Wiley Coyote movie. Um, it tested at like it was testing at like ninety-eight points. It has John Cena in it as like the main main character non like non i don't know what he does if he's if he's like live action or something i don't know what it's about. but anyways it's this wily coyote movie um and it's like scored and like the movie is completely done ready to go and they just shelved it jesus christ and all the people who were all the animators who worked on it are really upset and everybody who worked on it is upset obviously um yeah but also like it was it was everybody who saw it was like liked it and it was like reviewing well and they just for some reason just decided it was probably more they found the, oh, some some accountant or algorithm or something told them to just get rid of it instead, and it's gone. I don't even understand how that, like, it's it's obviously has to do with Hollywood accounting, which is like notoriously shady and stuff like that. But like to the point where it's like it makes more money to make Not something exists. and then delete it than it may, than it does to release it. It's like what? I have no idea how it works. It's very, it's very stupid. They get tax write-offs for the projects that lose money and avoid ro so. But like, if you never release it, and it, like, wasn't the point of the producers that they like essentially try to write it as a tax write-off, but then the movie was the the thing was successful, but like they still had to, like, like people are just like pulling a producers constantly now, but there's like no penalty for also it. Somebody who understands this more than me maybe can explain, but also for a tax write-off, okay, so you're getting the tax part written off, but you're still paying the rest. So, like, unless you're lying about what things cost... You, they do, that's, that's Hollywood accounting. Right, right, but I'm just saying, like, how can they do it so in the open without it being, like, get all the IRS, it's clear they're doing, like, a little, little schemey scheme. Yeah, they got. If you got enough money, you can essentially like. Yeah, you're you're invincible, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. It just seems so like you'd try to be sneakier about it, right? Like you wouldn't just be like, ah, never mind. Uh, WB. This one. We're gonna do the little thing. 
WB and Max and that whole conglomerate are looking into an, looking at an insane amount of debt from their mergers, so they're being savage with their accounting to claim losses. The IRS and the FTC don't go after large offenders. Yeah, they don't. Um, right. So, yeah. But it's like... Yeah. The, the amount that they're writing off on the taxes is like... <laughs> I tried to write off like $61 on my tax last year for like business expenses and it's like, uh, I still have to pay, you know, I still ended up having to pay like way too much money in taxes. Um, and then here are these guys, they could just delete entire months of production and it's fine. I mean, did you ever know that the, uh, the guy who wrote Men in Black never saw a dime for writing Men in Black? I heard that, I heard that it's still considered a loss like yeah. on paper which is like, like you made sequels bro <laughs> yeah you made... lie to us you wouldn't make a sequel for something that failed you put a hemsworth in one of these and it was terrible like what the fuck oh, yeah, that's I stupid that. i did I, I hated it sorry man it's okay sorry, I didn't see that <laughs> um so yeah it's it's really fucking stupid and and messed up and, and it's like it's fucked up too because like you know there's people who that's like something that would have gone on the resume and then it's just like deleted off the face of the earth so it's like well you can't i mean i guess you could like link to news articles saying yeah this got deleted but uh not only that but like if you're somebody who like you made some art especially if you were like maybe on a i mean everybody who has a hand in it, it would be disappointed but if you're say you're like the the main brain behind like the script or the 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 art direction or all that resume that's great yes you need that to make money but just for like every creator i know likes creating because they like they like to show their stuff hey off. they want money but but they like to put it out in the world you know yeah. if it just goes into a dumpster that's like tragic it hurts yeah and i i feel that like it, it, it's probably got to feel similar to like when you work for a game company and you, you've like spent months maybe years like putting together a game and then like the game just gets scrapped and it's like okay well like yeah <laughs> what about all this shit i just made and spent time on like sorry we can't show it because of you know reasons. The, the investors pulled out so uh it goes in the dumpster yeah, um tragic it sucks uh blah, blah, blah. hold on um there's a lot in the chat. Uh, my sister used to work for the SEC. They never went after large infractions. Always some schmuck who can't afford a good lawyer. Never executives or head fund managers because they know corporations are going to draw court proceedings out for years and years. Uh, Hollywood, blah, blah, blah. Callous. Um, they don't care if project got scrapped and know it's good. It was good. They are allergic to the potential for negative PR. Um, and you're basically persona non grata when that happens to your project. Yeah, that's it, it. It doesn't feel like it feels like I, I've I've talked to a lot of people and I've I've seen a lot of like people talking on their streams and stuff like that where it's like so much has sort of been deleted off these services and stuff like that that you know people are kind of like trying to figure out like okay so clearly the Hollywood system isn't working anymore if I want to like make stuff so like people are starting to look into their own sort of ways of getting projects off the ground. I'm sh sure you're never going to get quite the budget that uh, working in the Hollywood machine will get you, but, like, at this point, like, I don't, I don't know, like, what? <laughs> Go to A24 or release your shit on YouTube or something like that, and even YouTube isn't, like, a yeah. great option. So it's, uh... It's, 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 it's like, it's, ultimately, most of these people are very talented and they want to get paid for it, too. So, I mean, I'm sure they're making their own stuff on the side, but... yeah. I guess if it's, you're the, like the brainchild behind the project, then yeah, maybe go somewhere else. But if you're just like somebody working and you're just like, well, I worked on this thing. I wish people could see it, but unfortunately no one will ever know. Yeah. It's dumb. It it's annoying. Super dumb. So, uh, you know, that's depressing. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Uh, I actually hadn't heard about that Wiley Coyote one though. Uh, I, yeah, I, if what, John Cena was in it, it's being talked about lately. I have to assume that if if John Cena was in it, it was either like a Looney Tunes back in action situation, or John Cena was like 
I, I actually just imagined it was like Looney Tunes back because they did Space Jam 2 and fucking why did they it release that one? Like Jesus. A, it also been like a some kind of like you know they've been doing a lot of those like the cartoon character comes to the real world type thing which is dumb but I don't know could be it maybe it's know. like uh, I have no idea maybe it's like when Scooby and the gang met John Cena and they solved a mystery right. but it was all a cartoon or when the Flintstones met The Undertaker. I met The Undertaker. That's true, you did. Does that mean that by transitive property, I've met Fred Flintstone? Yeah, you're a Flintstone now. You, you're a you're a member of what's that weird group that they're in where they wear the stupid hats? It's basically like making fun of the, the Masons stone and cutter. the stone cutters. <laughs> That's the Simpsons. <laughs> it was like a like the Ox Club or whatever that they have in the Flintstones oh, too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Have you met the Great Gazoo? I haven't. Um, not yet. They haven't had the privilege. Nah, He's great, though. He's what great. a good guy. Uh, also, A24 is openly moving away from prestige projects and into big budget action. They've announced their intention to great. do that. Yeah, that's that's dumb because like everyone loves a24 because they make small budget stuff So it's like if a24 is making in general I'm just kind of sick aside from like, you know the one fast and the furious movie. I watch every year like big budget action is like I'm tired of it, man I'm <laughs> I'm who's watching it? I guess like general audiences, right? Yeah, just be you know, just forget about them I have a real main character complex when it comes to consuming consuming media yeah, when, when it comes like, to... What? Uh, Why would they not make this? Uh, I, I don't like that. And it's like, well, yeah, well, how many movies do you go to a year? Ah, uh, well, two. <laughs> and how much money do you spend on stuff? Well, I borrow my brother's Netflix and uh, uh, just make stuff I like, even though I don't spend any money on it. Yeah, it's like when, when you consider like uh, the things that are released, it's like we're, we're not the typical consumer like, you know, as much as we're like, oh, I value the art, I want a good script, it's like, no, like, most of the people are there, they're on their phone watching a TikTok while they're watching the movie, they're eating, like, three bags of popcorn. We are, we are not the lowest common denominator. <laughs> or maybe we are, and, and we just don't know it. Maybe we're actually the lowest common. Maybe, I, I mean, I, I do, I, I do see some Fast and stuff, Furious. but I don't, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't watch that much stuff i mean i do but not like in a way where they're making a ton of money off me no yeah i don't even say that in like a business sa business savvy way i'm just saying like i don't really these days i don't really watch stuff when it's new that often i just don't get around to it i don't know i'm not the guy that's <laughs> that they're making the money off of yeah they're I, as someone who doesn't have any money uh they are not worried about me <laughs> yeah you're you have no opinion i uh, my uh you know, my vote means nothing because I don't have a dollar to vote with. And in the in the <laughs> free market, that well, is what matters. Dollar, yeah. Oh my God, I have a dot. No, I, was, I technically I have ten. I have a dime. <laughs> Thank you, Business Daddy, for the dime. You're it's on much your appreciated. Way. We appreciate I it. Enough of those. If I had a dime for every time I said the word money, I would have uh, some dimes. Yeah, you'd have a few. I'd have a few. Um, I actually did, uh, I found, like, a website where you can, like, apply for, like, various for YouTube dimes. jobs, and, uh, I applied for, like, thumbnail designer for, like, a bunch of channels, and I'm like, ah, oh, great, what am I getting myself into? I'm sure no one will I feel like you could respond. get some editing jobs. I don't know I how could, you but get those jobs. Oh, it's the same website, but I, I looked it up, and, like, everyone was, like, the amount of pay that they were offering for, like, what kind of turnaround they were asking for, I was like, ah, this just sounds like... Is it, like, Fiverr for YouTube type thing? Sort of, but not really. It's like, it's a bit like there are some people offering like full time pay and benefits and things like that. And, and you know, you can sort of get those. But like, a lot of people are like, I'll pay you a thousand bucks, uh, or like, I'll pay you like 200 bucks for, per project. What I need you to do is I need you to take an hour long video and, and edit it together into highlights and short clips. And it's like, okay, well, like, if you're going to pay me 50 bucks or whatever for this, an hour. And then like the extra time it takes to edit, it just the, the the math didn't math, and so I was just right. like, I applied for a bunch of thumbnail designer positions because I'm like, no matter what they're offering, I can throw a fucking thumbnail together, 
in like no time flat and I don't even have to tell them that but the the bang for my buck seemed much more sensible as thumbnail designer than it did for for video editor plus they were like uh we need uh, two videos a week or or you know however many like this length videos a month and I'm like okay but like that's a lot <laughs> that's yeah that's that's way too much yeah yeah I can I can see that for making my own videos because like I'm dedicated, but like a lot of the channels are like today we're we're trying to make a YouTube channel tell people how to have business solutions and to do this, and I'm just like I I fucking have no interest in in this. You're also making your own stuff, so like you're not gonna have like a round of notes two times where you have to do make edits and shit. Yeah. Like you're you're making it, you know what you're making, so it's gonna be way less time to make something for yourself. Yeah most of the time i imagine unless yeah. they have a very like streamlined system of telling you what they want uh, i you know a lot of them seem to have like a pr a lot of them were very open about like their process and what they were like hoping the process would be but um i don't know it just like when i thought about the i mean i still have all of the fucking tabs open for the jobs i would consider applying for so those mm -hmm. are still there so i could still apply to them and i might but i don't know just like yeah. the 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 payoff didn't seem worth it but also, you know, you'll have to you'll have to ask your business daddy. I will. I'll, I'll have to ask either my business daddy or my my business father um, about what the best course of action is. But yeah, so I applied for like I applied for scriptwriter for a few of those positions, and then uh, I'm also gonna apply for a job at the local bank because I've right. done that before. Yeah. And I, you know, at the very least, if I'm working at a bank. I, I know I'm getting a you know consistent hours, and I can come home and not have worked on like somebody else's projects and just work on my own projects. Yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, I, I I did look up, I did look up a number of video, editing positions and I don't know the the, it just didn't seem, worth it. But worth also it. I th there's there. like. I, you know, there's like a number of YouTube channels I watch where if they were like, hey, do you want to edit my videos? I'd probably jump at the chance. And they, for all I know, pay, they would pay sure. less. But it's like, I don't know. Because like, I think the other thing was that none of the channels that I saw offering the video, video editing positions were ones where I was just like, yeah, this is cool. I would do it for this channel. They were doing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the thing about like, the job being more interesting to you if you're you know even if you're doing like basic shit if you're working for a company that you're actually interested in that that helps yeah it helps but yeah and all of them were like yeah business solutions or like a lot of like roblox videos <laughs> minecraft like 100 hour playthroughs or something like that and i was like yeah no no thank you so i'll go back to working at the bank <laughs> Yeah. How's your guy coming? How do you feel about it? Uh, I don't know. What, I mean, I've pretty much faithfully recreated the. Uh, you did. It is very faithful. I like, I like his eyebrow things. He kind of resemb He has, he has bug-like qualities. He does. But so does the actual guy. So does the like, sprite. Uh, that's not on you. That's what I mean. The sprite. It's interesting. Like your guy somehow just by having hair on his head it makes his must his mouth look more like a mustache and in, in general he just seems more human even though he's still yeah. kind of like the same monster as the guy on you know the other I tried guy to humanize him in some ways yeah I tried to give him some i gave him ears and shit like i tried to do some things to make <laughs> him not not just look like a slab of meat like they threw him in the game you did you did more of an artist's uh what's the word i'm looking for uh not rendition exactly but you did more of a interpretation interpretation thank you that's the word i'm looking for i did yeah. it's just uh mine went straight to dvd or you know <laughs> i was like the shot for shot remake of psycho starring vince vaughn and you're like bates motel there you go i have integrity look at you
Ian's yeah. guy got dad bod. Yeah, I guess he does a little bit. He's got a little bit of a punch there. Brandon. Yes, Ian. You were going to ask me something? You have anything to plug? Oh. Um, I don't have anything to plug, but a good, good friend of mine, his band's album just came out on the Spotify's and other places you can get music. Um, the band's oh, called... Mento. What was that? That's Mento. It's Mento, mate. Um, but yeah, the band's called Ragabash and the album's called Lotus Eater. So I'm gonna plug them. Go go uh -oh. check out Lotus Clock. You better Yeah, watch out Lotus. Hills. But You're targeted. Um, they but yeah, um I totally forgot about that cycle remake for point six out of ten on IMDB. Apparently they didn't out Hitchcock Hitchcock. Nobody out hitchcocks the cock. Um But uh yeah, go check out Lotus Eater by Ragabash on your music streaming platform of choice. What kind um, of music do they play? It's kind of a uh, garage rocky with a little bit of a let with but not so heavy on the garage sound but still it's like a little bit in there but they've got like a good variety of, of styles it's kind of eclectic like um they're all sort of within that garage indie rock sound but all of the songs kind of have like a different vibe to them so they're not all like sounding exactly the same but there's still it still feels like an overall cool. consistent album I would say um but yeah, uh, Marshall is the drummer. Marshall is the guy I know. Um, and actually, it's interesting because I remember they released this, the first single for their album a couple weeks ago. And for their single, like the mixing on it was like kind of bad. And I, I like I, I felt I didn't want to like say that the mixing was bad. But um, I talked to Austin about it because Marshall is Austin's cousin. Um, but I was... Uh, I was talking with Austin about it. I'm like, hey, the, is, is the mixing... Do they need, like, a, a mixing or mastering engineer? And they're like, yeah, Marshall's mad about the mixing on the song, too. So, And thankfully, on the actual album release, the song is much better mixed. It's it's a much better... Like, I would nice. say the mixing and mastering on the actual final album release is, is actually quite good. Uh, I couldn't find too much to complain about it. Uh, overall, I enjoyed the album. I thought it was a nice little vibe album. 40 minutes in length, I want to say it is uh yeah it's a nice little if you want if you want some like poppy uh garage indie rock listen to listen to it it's good i liked it you say the name of it one more time ragabash is the name of the band r-a-g-a-b-a-s-h i'll write it down actually fuck it um and the album's title is lotus eater if you see a picture of a big uh magenta colored dog with i think two heads i can't remember exactly Bada, I almost wrote bada you know boom. How many heads? <laughs> I almost wrote bada fucking boom on the um, <laughs> bada bing and uh, also bada boom. In case yeah. you're wondering, bada bing, bada boom, ragabash. Uh, but yeah, ragabash, right there. Cool. Give them a listen. I'll check that out. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I hope that the album does well for them. Uh, they, the the guy said that they got. Hold on, let me, let me look at the text real quick because he said. They got somebody to do the uh, the mixing and mastering. Uh, Stuart Sykes, who's worked with Jack White, Modest Mouse, etc., etc. Wow. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. I think it's a well put together album. It's got some good vibes to it. Give it a listen. I will. I will. Yeah. Um, that's that's my plug. Is is somebody else's stuff. <laughs> sure. Fair Brandon, uh, follow uh, us on YouTube's. Uh, we're still climbing slowly but surely on on the social medias, uh, and you know you probably want, you you want to get in on the ground floor for sure. You know that's so true. You, you don't want to be that guy who's just like no, nah, I, I. You want you want to be able to say you like Draw Bomb before they were cool. Um, Absolutely which right. Is still, yeah. you still have plenty of time. We haven't you know, reached we, that yet at all. You can still be part of the first thousand and thirty people if you haven't already. We haven't gotten cool yet. So you have plenty of time to get in. Yeah, we're not quite there. Um, but yeah, Daily uh, Dana that. supports uh, us. Thank you, have, Daily Dana. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, we, we appreciate it. We're dropping uh, cartoons. We have a new one. It's, this one's kind of like some mixed media, so I'm excited about it. Yeah, me too. Uh, it'll be it'll be coming up in the future. It's, Probably, you know, we 
we're, depending on when folks get assets done, I can probably come out with it this week. Okay, cool. Yeah, it de depends on when to you tomorrow. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're doing but, um, you're doing the posters and you're doing the the logo of the the app. Yeah, sure am. All right. But yeah, uh, I'm excited about this one. I think it'll be good. So uh, follow us so that you don't miss it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that that's that sounds like a pretty good mix of of plugs. It. I have to finish my drawing, but but those are great plugs. Those are some yeah, good plugs. plugs. Those are good plugs. <laughs> um, yeah, this has been an episode of the YouTube Daily Dana. Just linked a channel. I think it's her channel. It's our channel. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the, I'm. I'm I'm excited for the the new sketch. I think it's going to be a good one. I yeah, we had a lot of fun. We, if you were watching us do Empty Head Buffet last week, you saw some of what we're working on, and it's pretty unique. We had a lot of fun with it. Yeah. You know whether the internet also enjoys it or not that remains to be seen. But we had fun, and that's the standard we go for. Absolutely right. I'm actually still surprised the internet liked the last video. I, I I'm serious when like I say I expected us to put the video up. And like maybe we'd get like a hundred views on it, which is still a good amount. I mean, I still think that the fact that like most of our sketches have gotten at least over a hundred views is uh is still amazing to me because I, I see a lot of people put something up and it gets like eight. So like a hundred views is is nothing to shake a stick at. But then you know the last one kind of really blew up in a way that I did not expect, uh, which was really really <laughs> I liked cool. That one. Yeah, I think it's uh, I I have to wonder like what got the i i feel like <laughs> we we did use a superlative in the title like we called it worst food judge ever so like saying worst blank ever i don't want to say that that was like the the thing to it it all and helps also, because of the system yeah and the the thumbnail was probably decent too like i i, I somebody was like don't put the title of the video in the thumbnail put like extra text that'll kind of like try and hook the person into the thumbnail so like when i put like he ruined the whole show it felt very like we kind of like we're hitting that clickbait bullseye yeah. almost all we need uh, is a jpeg or a png of mr beast over top of it like with yeah, like a weird a weirdly with like, a creepy smile saturated face with like fake teeth and he's like pointing he's at it going like <laughs> God, those, so we're, those... we're we're taking advantage in every way we can and it's working for us a little bit that's great yeah we're we're, uh, we're trying to uh we're playing the game they make us play <laughs> yeah and boy what a what a soulless game it is sometimes it really it really is all right i think my guy's done nice and this would be smile haunts my nightmares mine too um but yeah, do click. Yeah, I, I, I was, I used to be like kind of opposed to clickbait, but I heard one guy say something about clickbait that kind of like really put it into perspective for me. And he was like, if you don't like clickbait your title and your your thumbnail, and not like clickbait in the classic sense of like basically lying, like you know, don't lie about your shit. But like he said, like if you don't make your title and thumbnail like clickbait, then you're kind of just like doing your the thing you worked on a disservice because no one's gonna see it. So like if you want people to see the thing that you worked hard on you know clickbait it and i'm like yeah that's right. that's that's fair that actually that kind of like uh put it into perspective for me you're throwing it into the void i mean if you think about it like how many hours of content is added to youtube every day like probably more i think it's like a billion hours like a year <laughs> i think i think it's a billion hours of youtube is uploaded or a video is uploaded to youtube every day or something like that and that's not including uh, when we yeah, upload so. this episode of Draw Bomb Live. That's going to be two more hours for that billion. <laughs> the clickbait stuff's just to get people in, whether they like it or not. That's all authentic, I would say. Yeah, yeah. It's it's you you want people to click on the video to give it a chance, and and that's that's the important part. Like you can't like force we somebody to watch your video. And it's it's clear that like certain videos are enjoyed by people because like they watch the whole thing or this or that. So, yeah. So you know you lure them in with your stupid Mr. Beast. <laughs> PNG and then you're good to go. Yeah. Gotta put the Mr. Beast face on and have him point at the thing that has the arrow over it in text that says, This is crazy. There's also, a Google Chrome. I think I talked about it on the show before. There's a Google Chrome uh, uh, plugin 
that mm -hmm. puts that puts like one out of like a hundred of those thumbnails over or PNGs over top of every YouTube video. So some <laughs> of them are just really horrible because it'll be like a news thing where it's like, like oh no, you know, yeah, like plane crashes and then Mr. Beast is like <laughs> in front of it. That's funny as hell. Also, thank you for the 19 bits, Dana. Thank you for all the bits, top donator of the month. Actually, that's not true. I mean, we've had Leviathan Den subscribe and, and, and stuff like that. But still, we, in terms we, of we don't bit, need a, the, yeah. we don't. It's not a competition. It's not a competition. In terms of bit dodos, daily data you. is winning the competition. Though, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Most bits. Most bits. Um, but no, thanks it's... everybody for watching. Business Daddy, Business Papa, Business Father. Uh, we had Business Mama was there. I think there was Business Business um, Grand Grandpa uh, President. Yeah. Bus Lotus Clock, Bell Bell Rocket, Business Leviathan Neighbor, Den, <laughs> Daily Dana, Business Business, oh, Doctor Soundcheck, Z News, Doctor Soundcheck. Wow, what a star-studded uh, crowd we have tonight. Yeah. I don't see any dead shadows. They did not die twice. Uh oh, did we ever change the stream? Info? No, it's on mine. It says you changed it. Okay. Oh, I guess we have some tags. <laughs> Bad at this game. <laughs> did oh, you put that yeah. tag? <laughs> I did. I did. I see. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah. As long as uh, I, um, I think Doctor Soundcheck probably watched you play Sekiro when you played it. He like, did. It, okay, there he you did. go. That's why. There. That explains yeah. it. But I know what he was talking about. Hey. But uh, yeah, no, the shadows are not dying right now. Uh, but maybe we'll do more of that later if, if you know, everybody wants to watch me suffer some more. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I, I'm i sad I missed the first stream. I, I went to bed early that night. Yeah. There was a big... It was a big snake, and it was scaring me on stream. Oh, and no. And I think I yelled a few times. It Like, they were doing some, like... Yeah, you know, I don't, I'm not going to spoil it, but it was, it was yucky. And I'm not even that freaked out by snakes, but it was... Scary time. Don't 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 get et by that snake. I tried not to. And then when you kill the snake, you you can go snake, snake, snake. Because that's what they say in, in Metal Gear Solid when sure. you die. Anyways, when folks, this dies. is this has been a fun episode. <laughs> it has been. It was a good one. We talked about stuff. We, we did we the laughed, thing. We loved. We did. We 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 ate. We prayed. We, I just couldn't now think we're of a, sleep. I couldn't think of a good like unexpected route to take that joke. Anyways, um, bye. <laughs> so long. So, so long. long. Thanks for being here, everybody. Much appreciated. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye.